All right, guys, BLM here back with a new video. In this video, I'll be recasting Survivor Micronesia. Now, obviously, Micronesia was fans versus favorites. However, the way I'll be recasting this is as if Micronesia was All Stars 2, which was its actual initial plan. I mean, that was what it was initially casted as. They were going to do another All Star season for season 16. However, they eventually dropped that idea and it became fans versus favorites. So for this video, I'll be casting Micronesia as if it actually was another full All Star season. So for the sake of this video, I will be following about the same rules that Micronesia did. I will only be including seasons 7 through 15. 7 as it was the only season before All Stars that they weren't able to get a full representation of that cast as that season hadn't fully aired yet. So 7 will be included in this and then also obviously 9 through 15 which were the seasons that happened since the last All-Star season. And through this we'll also talk about the favorites from fans versus favorites and then talk about whether or not they would make my All-Star cast. Now I am going to go for a semi-realistic cast here like a cast I could actually see production putting together. Obviously there was a reason why Micronesia wasn't All-Stars too and I have a feeling it was because they couldn't get certain people that they wanted. And once they couldn't get everyone that they wanted, they just decided to drop the All-Star idea. But we're still going to be casting this as if it was All-Stars 2. So let's just jump right into it, starting with Season 7. So here at the Pearl Islands, first I'll talk about the people who I considered that didn't end up making the cut. So I considered Burton. I think Burton is someone that was pretty fun in his original season. I mean, he was someone that got a bit too cocky right away, got blindsided as first tribal council. But when he came back into the game, his alliance with Johnny Fairplay pretty much ran the season up until the final five. I thought he was a pretty fun personality, someone that played a very dynamic game. And while he's someone that I do want to see play again i don't think it was the right time for him to return at season 16 i do think that's probably a point where he was probably forgotten about i don't think it's a point where production was really too apt to really bring him back so i didn't put him on i did consider savage i think savage is way too close to another person that i wanted even more on the cast and while those two people spoiler end up being on cambodia together i do feel like if they were casting normally savage wouldn't make the cut over this other person so I didn't put Savage on the cast. Now someone that did make my cast from this season though is Sandra. Sandra Diaz Twine. Obviously this is before she became the two-time winner of Survivor. However, she was someone that was actually supposed to be on the original All-Stars but couldn't do it because she was still sick from her initial time playing. And I feel like for Micronesia here, she was supposedly in the casting process. I feel like there's no real reason why she wouldn't be brought back if it was a full All-Star season. She's also talked about multiple times how she kind of considered Survivor her job and how she would always accept it if they offered it to her at the time at least so i see no reason why sandra wouldn't be on this cast if it was a full-blown all-star season now we might as well talk about johnny fairplay johnny fairplay is the only person from survivor pearl islands that did actually end up on survivor fans versus favorites and johnny fairplay i mean come on he's a shoe in for this cast right i i, I feel like there's no way you can do the next all-star season after his run and not put him on i mean like the fact that he wasn't on the original all-stars is still very questionable to me obviously it was before fair play came who he was on the show like it was filmed during the pre-merge of Pearl Islands when it was airing. It was before the grandma lie. It was before he was flipping back and forth between alliances. Like, it was before he became the villain that he was. So, I mean, I do think Micronesia was the first time they really had a shot at bringing him back. And he was brought back in the real Micronesia. So, again, there's no reason why he wouldn't be on All-Stars. I think he perfectly fits the cast. Probably one of the biggest names on the cast, I mean, as a whole. So, I mean, really, Johnny Fairplay had to be there. Now for Survivor Vanuatu, and there were a lot of contenders here i did only end up putting three people from this cast on the cast though but i did consider someone like a chris doherty I, I think chris doherty is someone that i would have really liked to see play again probably around this time i feel like at this point the time's passed but i think the problem for him is that just straight up production didn't seem to like him and also with uh, the stuff with julie and jeff probes it was just kind of a weird thing so again, I don't think Chris was ever going to ever play again, but it would have been interesting to see him here. I think Sarge and Rory are two characters I really loved in Vanuatu that I do feel like are kind of forgotten about nowadays, especially Rory. I mean, Rory is such a massive character in that pre-merge of that season, and I just feel like he's completely forgotten about now, and it's such a shame. But I think even then, I don't think they really had a shot of being on an all-star cast. Obviously, Julie is someone that was still dating Jeff Probst at the time, I believe. And if not, she can't be on Survivor ever again because of that anyway. So that's something. Ian is someone that would have been an interesting returnee. I, I don't feel like I would have needed it on this season, though, as someone that she was very close to was on the season. So 
Yeah, I didn't put Leanne on. Now, out of the people that weren't on the actual Micronesia, the only person I did put on was Twyla. I feel like Twyla was someone that was in the running for Micronesia. She later is in the running for Heroes vs. Villains. He is someone that I, I think production wanted back at some point during this time. And I feel like that she's a shoe in for this all-star cast. Again, if they added 10 more people to fans versus favorites, I think she would have easily been one of those 10 people. So I think Twyla is a pretty easy pick here. She's on the cast. And now let's talk about the two people from Micronesia, starting with Eliza. I think Eliza is, again, another pretty big shoe in for the cast. I mean, I think she's someone that was a really big personality her initial time on the show. I mean, I believe she had the most confessionals for a good chunk of that season up until Chris's run at the end. So, I mean, I, she was a massive character. I mean, she was also a pretty fun player, someone that was willing to play dynamically. I think she's a shoe in for the cast. And also, let's talk about Amy Cusick, who is another shoe in for the cast. I mean, that's why they were on Micronesia, despite Vanuatu being, what, like three or four years ago at that point. That's why they made the cut, is because they are massive characters and amy again like probably one of the few true female villains especially from this era of survivor i think you kind of had to bring her back here and again i feel like you don't need amy and leanne on the cast so leanne had to be cut because of that but again amy easy pick had to be on the cast now for survivor palau and palau's weird i mean i think palau because palau was actually not represented at all on fans versus favorites despite palau being a very popular season at that point in survivor history but let's talk about some contenders here so i think the biggest contender here is ian i think ian is someone that production clearly wanted back However, Ian just has no interest in playing Survivor again, and he's stated that multiple times. Even now, he has no interest in playing Survivor again, which is a shame. I would love to see Ian play again. It's just, I don't think it was ever happening, so I didn't put him on the cast. I didn't put James Miller on the cast. It would have been hilarious. Again, James is another one that, a uh, fantastic Survivor character. Kind of forgotten about nowadays. Not really ever talked about. It would have been hilarious to see him back. But, I mean, really, I don't think it was really necessary. Katie Gallagher is someone I really considered. I mean, she is someone that, again, had some fun moments on that season. I just didn't end up putting her on. Janu is someone that was supposedly in the running for fans versus favorites, which is something I really don't get. I don't know why they would have wanted Janu back, but I just thought I'll mention her here. But I did put two people from Palau on the cast, starting with obviously Tom Westman. And from what I understand, Tom turned it down. I think that's the vibe I'm getting. The vibe that I get from why Micronesia ended up being fans versus favorites instead of all stars is because a couple people turned it down. Some couple major people turned it down. I feel like Tom Westman was one of them. I don't think Tom Wesson said yes, but considering he was eventually on Heroes vs. Villains, I don't feel like it was like never going to happen. So I decided like it's enough for me to put Tom on this cast. And Tom's a shoe in I mean, one of the most popular winners at that point in Survivor history. One of the most dominant winners. One of the best players to ever play Survivor at that point in Survivor history. I mean, I think it's a shoe in that Tom is on the cast. The other person's not as close of a shoe in It was someone that was supposedly on the All-Star cast before they changed it up. But the main reason I wanted to put him back here was because of his rivalry with Tom, and that is Kobe. Now, Kobe is someone that I think is interesting. I mean... It, I wouldn't mind seeing him back again. I, I don't feel like I need it, though. Like, I wouldn't be... To be honest, I would rather have someone like a John Carroll back than a Kobe. I feel like John Carroll has more of an interesting arc there. I feel like Kobe is just kind of there for most of Palau. I mean, he gets consistent screen time. He's kind of shown as, like, kind of the rival to Tom. But, I mean, outside of that, I don't feel like he brings that much to the table. But, again, he was in the running for... The all-star cast, I do feel like he was a likely returning at that point in Survivor history. And I feel like I don't have another person on this cast that is similar to him. So I felt like because of that, Kobe does make the cut on this cast. But if I was just straight up just picking people that I want to see back again, he probably wouldn't make the cut then. Now for Survivor Guatemala, where I considered a lot of people, but none of them made the cut. <laughs> I mean, like, I love Guatemala. I mean, Guatemala, I think, is one of the most underrated seasons of the show ever. And... There are a lot of people here I considered. I mean, I considered Lydia, a Cindy. I considered Amy O'Hara. I considered Danny. I mean, obviously Danny is back for season 40. Those other three have all been considered for previous seasons. Just, again, none of them really made the cut here. I just don't feel like any of them were very likely to be on All-Stars 2. I mean, maybe, supposedly Lydia was actually kind of close, but it's like... I don't, I don't need to see Lydia play again. Then from the guys, I mean, Brian Corden is someone I would love to see play again. Supposedly was just never in the running. I mean, Brandon is someone that I feel like had a lot of potential in that game. Just, again, wasn't really in the running. Jamie, Gary, Judd, even Rafe. I feel like all of them were massive characters on that season. And a lot of them have been asked back at certain points in Survivor history. And Gary was actually on my initial 
cast here. Actually, I, this is the thing. I had Gary on the cast instead of Kobe. However, just the more I thought about it, it seemed weird to have Tom on the cast along with Gary as I felt like they were so similar archetype-wise. And also Gary with another person we'll be talking about from next season. It's like I feel like there's just two similar of people on this cast and it was just kind of weird to have Gary on the cast with those other people who I think are bigger locks. So I had to cut Gary, even though I do feel like Gary would have been a really fun returnee. So at the end of the day, no one made it here from Guatemala. Now from Survivor, Panama, which I actually have four people from Panama on this cast. So for the people that didn't make the cut, I considered Aris, obviously he won. So it's like, I mean, I considered him, but not really, didn't really put him on the cast. I, again, I don't feel like production was that interested in bringing him back. For this season, I feel like the only reason he was brought back later for Blood vs. Water was because of Vetus. So, yeah. Austin, I considered. I, I think Austin is someone that I think is an underrated character and player in Survivor history as a whole. But I think at the end of the day, didn't make the cut. I also considered Courtney Merritt. I feel like Courtney Merritt is someone that would be a fun returnee from a character standpoint. I just feel like she brings nothing to the table gameplay-wise. And again, I didn't want to go beyond the four people limit that they usually set on these All-Star seasons. I mean, obviously, with the exception of the original All-Stars. But usually with All-Star seasons nowadays, they don't like to go beyond four people from one specific cast. Now let's talk about the people that did make the cut. Sari was on the original Fans vs. Favorites. She made the cut here as well. I mean, like, I, there's no reason to not push Suri. Biggest character from that season. Biggest player from that season. Fan favorite from that season. No reason to not put her on. Three people that I put on that weren't on the original fan versus favorites, though, were Danielle. I feel like Danielle obviously is someone that came back for Heroes vs. Villains, which I think that was probably a good sign that she was probably in the running for Micronesia as well. I also feel like Danielle's an underrated character in Panama. I feel like a lot of people don't talk about Danielle in Panama, and I feel like she was just... A really fun dynamic personality that season also had the willingness to play the game strategically so I, I feel like there was no reason to not bring her back here when the cast here obviously was expanded I also put Shane Powers obviously that one was pretty easy I and mean, Shane was someone that was in the running for Micronesia obviously later ends up being in the running for Heroes vs. Villains and ends up being in the running for Blood vs. Water and Cambodia and it's like I, I feel like at this point in Survivor history Shane was a very likely returnee Again, obviously massive, massive character. Would have been an easy pick to put on the season. And the last person here is probably the biggest shoe-in that wasn't on the actual Micronesia cast, and that is Terry. I I, I feel like it's it's really mind-blowing to me that Terry wasn't on Micronesia. I, I Really, it's mind-blowing to me that it took as long as Cambodia to bring Terry back. I Terry, again, was such a massive figure on that season was a massive underdog in that end game. Well, through the use of his idol and also immunity challenges, he was pretty much able to almost run the entire table. I mean, if he had won that final immunity challenge, he would have been the first winner in Survivor history to essentially win out from the merge on. I mean, he would probably be the worst winner in Survivor history up to that point, but it would have been incredible to watch. But from what I understand, Terry was actually cast for Micronesia, obviously when it was an all-star season, but also beyond that, and then was later replaced when James was brought in and from obviously Survivor China, which had just finished filming. So again, I feel like if the cast expanded to 20, no reason why Terry wouldn't be on the cast. I mean, he should be a lock anyway. Now moving on to Cook Islands. Senders here, I considered Nate. I think Nate would have been a really great attorney. I thought he was a really fun character on his original season. Again, another one that I feel like is pretty forgotten at this point in Survivor history, but I think the problem with Nate here is that, again, there's just too many other people to bring back from Cook Islands. Spoiler, I brought back four people from Cook Islands. There were three people from Cook Islands on Micronesia. So, I mean, there were just too many heavy hitters from Cook Islands to bring back. So Nate had to sadly get cut there. I would have loved to see Cowboy return. Cowboy is really fun. Never was really going to happen. But that's something I should mention about Cook Islands. That Cook Islands has a very top-heavy cast. I've bashed Cook Islands in the past, and Cook Islands is still a terrible season. But I think Cook Islands has a very top-heavy cast, where it has probably like six, seven, maybe eight people that are massive characters. Some of the best characters in Survivor history. But then the other 12 are nobodies. Like, I know nothing about those people. They brought nothing to the show. They were just terrible casting and really just recruited just for the ethnic diversity sort of theme that they were going for. But again, from this season though, I had to bring back four of them. So let's talk about Parvati right now. So Parvati is someone that obviously did end up making the real season of Survivor. Micronesia obviously ends up winning the season and obviously becomes a Survivor legend because of that. However, coming into 
Micronesia, she was kind of looked at as like the why are you even here sort of person. Kind of like the Amber from Survivor All-Stars where people were like kind of confused why Amber was on All-Stars. And I, I feel like, again, same similar thing here in Poverty. However, Poverty was actually not even going to be cast. I mean, like the thing is, Candace was actually the one that was supposed to be on the season. However, Candace had to turn it down and that led to Poverty being cast over her, which, yeah, I mean, I think Candace making the cut makes sense. I think Candace is a bigger character on that season. I think she's a bigger player on that season. However, with Candace saying no, I think you have that poverty on. I, mean, I think there's no one else, no other female, I should say, from that season that's worth bringing back other than poverty. And I did consider cutting poverty on this recast here, but I, I do think that there is something there with poverty in, in Cook Islands where she does have a couple fun moments here and there. You can definitely tell that she's playing the game in a different way than most other people have played the game previously, where again, she is obviously being very openly flirtatious, trying to get the men to do what she wants. And while that is something that like someone like a Misty Giles did before her or like a Julie Berry, I feel like both of them weren't likely returnees. Obviously, Misty was a very early boot. Julie was dating Jeff. So, I mean, really, I feel like Parvati is the best option here. So I did put Parvati on the cast. Now for the other people that did end up making the cast in the real Micronesia, obviously you got Penner. Penner's a shoe in I, I think Penner is someone you have to have. Penner was the biggest character of Cook Islands. He's the one that had the most confessionals of the season, despite him not even making it to the end of the game. Obviously, I mean, I just think Penner is, again, a lock for an all-star season, especially at that point in Survivor history. You have to have him on. And then same thing with Ozzy. I mean, Ozzy, while he didn't have the biggest edit in Cook Islands, he was obviously a fan favorite. He was someone that won five out of six immunity challenges, which is really just insane. I mean, he is someone that, again, I think that was a shoe in for a return. I, I feel like there's no way you can do an all-star season after Cook Islands and not have Ozzy on the cast. And the last person that I put on the cast is the person that didn't end up being on The Real Micronesia, and that is Yule. Uh, Yule, obviously the winner of Cook Islands, someone that is back right now for Survivor 40. This is the sense that I get. I think Yule turned it down, that, especially after Survivor 40 press. I get the sense that Yule didn't want to play again after Cook Islands. I have the sense that he turned down Micronesia, and that was part of the reason why Jeff Probst was so apprehensive to do an all-winner season, because he didn't think winners like Yule would come back. And I feel like Yule probably turned down Micronesia, and that's what made them not have enough people to make a full all-star cast, or them make it not worth bring back a full all-star cast so i have a feeling you'll turn down the real season but again since it's not confirmed since it's not well known like like it was with candace i decided to still put him on the cast here i also feel like if you're going to make an all-star season at this point in survivor history you have to have yule how do you not have yule and ozzy i'm mean, both of them i think you have to have them on all-star season at this point in survivor history so they're here now for survivor fiji which had a lot of contenders really considered a lot of people here as well obviously this is right after Fiji. So I did consider some people. I mean, obviously Earl is a big consideration. I decided to not put him on though. I mean, I would have loved to see Earl play again. I just don't feel like he fits in this cast. I feel like there's bigger priorities than Earl on this season. And with Yao Man already on the season as well, I don't feel like you need both Yao Man and Earl. I didn't feel like Earl was necessary on the cast. Dreams is someone that would be a lot of fun, but really I don't feel like Dreams is ever returning. Same thing goes with like Rocky or Anthony. I feel like they could have had fun returns, but it never was really going to happen. Stacy, kind of similar thing. I did consider Alex. I think Alex is someone that, again, at this point is kind of forgotten about in Survivor history, but he had a massive edit in Survivor Fiji. I mean, he was one of the biggest characters of that season. I think he's also someone that was a pretty decent player. I mean, he's the first person to ever vote against their ally in a vote split situation that caused the ally to go home over him. I think that's something that is impressive. But at the end of the day, again, he just didn't make the cut. I mean, there were just too many other priorities over him. I think really the only one that you can cut over him is probably a Kobe. Like, this is a stacked cast. I mean, that's something I might as well say, especially from the men's side of things. It's very stacked. I think Kobe is the only person that you can cut and I would be completely fine with it. I think everyone else that's here needs to be there. But as I mentioned before, Yao Man made the cast. I mean, Yao Man, pretty clearly, one of the biggest characters from that season, the fan favorite out of that season. Again, someone that had to be back for the next All-Star season. No reason why he shouldn't be here. But I did put another person from Fiji on. I decided to put Michelle. I, I feel like Michelle supposedly was in the running for her Micronesia. But I also feel like she's someone that was very likable on her original season. She did get a 
bit of a smaller edit. I mean, she did get the fire making stuff. I mean, that's something that was very positive towards her. And she did get screwed over by Twist. If it wasn't for that Twist, she more than likely makes it to the end of the season and probably gets no votes, but I mean, she makes it to the end of the season. But I felt like she was someone that was worthy of being brought back, so I have her here. And now finally, for Survivor China, the final season before Micronesia, it was actually still airing at the time that Micronesia was filming, so that's kind of a weird scenario there. So let's talk about some contenders first. Obviously Todd. I think Todd is someone that would have been interesting. It just feels like production never liked Todd. I really don't know why. I mean, it feels like, again, the fact that he wasn't even considered for Survivor 40 is a travesty. So I think that's a shame, but again, I just feel like it was never going to happen. Frosty and Jean Robert were two people that I thought had fun runs in China. Again, just didn't make the cut. Jamie Dugan, same thing, didn't make the cut. Courtney is one that I really considered. I actually almost put Courtney on the cast. But, I mean, this is another situation, though, that Courtney turned down. And I think it's pretty well known that she turned it down. So I felt like for that reason, it wasn't really worth putting her on the cast. Even though obviously she is a very fun character and someone that did eventually play again in Survivor Heroes vs. Villains. But I felt like there were enough people from China to bring back other than her that it was fine to leave her off. So now let's talk about the people that did end up making the actual cast itself. James. I think James, again, a shoe in Obviously was a fan favorite of Survivor China. Massive character. Had a big storyline of him getting blindsided with two idols in his pocket. No reason to not bring him back here for All Stars. And the other one was Amanda. And this one is one I really thought about. Again, I did consider putting Courtney in over Amanda because that's actually what was initially supposed to happen. I mean, it was originally going to be Courtney on Micronesia. She turned it down and they brought in Amanda to replace her. I considered, like, who else could replace Amanda? Is, like, Amanda really necessary for this cast? And to be honest, I don't think she is. But... I didn't really find a good replacement. I feel like everyone else had like some sort of negative to them. Like again, like Danny, like I don't feel like production would have wanted her back and I don't feel like she really wanted to come back at this point in Survivor history. So she didn't make the cut. I think someone like, I, I guess like a Katie would have been someone that you could have possibly put in over Amanda. But I do feel like Amanda had a decent run in China. I, I do think she was someone that Played the game very strategically. I think she's probably one of the better players out of the female field here. I mean, probably outside of like Suri. I think she's probably the one that played the best first time game. Or at least I should say the most strategic and most forward like sort of first time game. So I felt like that was enough for Amanda to make the cut. So I decided to put her on, which essentially means... Everyone from the original Micronesia ends up making the actual cut for All Stars. That wasn't my intention when starting the process for making this video. I was actually expecting people like Parvati and Amanda to not make the cut. Because again, they were kind of like questionable choices at the time. But I just feel like there weren't many people to replace them with. So really at the end of the day, this is going to end up being the 10 people from Survivor Micronesia plus 10 others. But now for the final person that I put on from Survivor China, I also put PG. And the reason I put PG on is because the story's always changed with PG on like whether she was cut or whether she turned it down. I, the story's always changed. So I decided, you know what, let's just put PG on. I feel like PG is someone that production would have at least considered. At that point, I mean, they clearly did. And I feel like if, again, if the cast was brought to 20, I feel like she's pretty clearly one of the people that would be on the cast. Again, she was a big character in China. She was an underdog for a good chunk of that season. She was in the running for fan favorite. I mean, I think PG's a pretty easy person to put on the cast. So there we go. That is my cast, my recasting of Survivor Micronesia, if it was All-Stars. So we have Sandra Diaz Twine. We have Johnny Fairplay. We have Twyla Tanner. We have Eliza Orleans. We have Amy Cusick. We have Tom Westman. We have Kobe Archer, we have Danielle Di Lorenzo, we have Terry Dietz, we have Sri Fields, we have Shane Powers, we have Yul Kwan, we have Ozzy Luce, we have Parvati Shallow, we have Jonathan Penner, we have Yao Man Chan, we have Michelle Yi, we have Amanda Kimmel, we have PG Law, and we have James Clement. That is the 20 person cast for Survivor Micronesia. If it was all stars. And yeah, to, I, I'll be completely honest here. Starting this video, I expected a much more interesting result. I think this is kind of the, the like, typical all star cast you would have expected. I was expecting me to throw in like some surprises here and there, but I, I just don't feel like there was much opportunity to really do so. I would like to do a similar thing for Survivor Caramo, and I think that one would be a lot more interesting because, I mean, Come on. Caramoan has a lot of issues with its cast, and I think that'll be a lot of fun to do sometime down the road. But for now, that's my recasting of Survivor Micronesia. Thank you for watching.